Hi and welcome to the back page on the 29th of May 2023. Today I'm getting on the soapbox. What am I getting on the soapbox about you ask? I'm getting on the soapbox about the statement that there is no such thing as a relationship between posture and pain. So to say that posture is irrelevant to pain, therefore poor posture isn't going to cause pain. It's just, it's just a dumb thing to say, quite frankly. Go to the gym, do a deadlift, do a squat, do any exercise, and do all the things that you're not meant to do. Don't bend your knees when you do the squat. Don't stick your bum out. Don't arch your back. Don't stick your chest out. See how many squats you can do before it starts to pose a problem. And it might just be a dull burning pain in your lower back that becomes something bigger later on, but you will very quickly figure out that there most certainly is a relationship between poor posture and pain. Similarly at a desk, slouch, stoop, round your shoulders. Don't use a lumbar support. See how long it takes you before you start to experience discomfort, pain, maybe low grade, maybe sharp, maybe a different experience, but it will not be good. So uh, in terms of the statement that there is no such thing as a relationship between posture and pain, it's a dumb statement. Let's call it hashtag dumb things people say, hashtag number 17. It, it is often cited that in the scientific research, no one has managed to find a relationship between posture and pain. Personally, whilst that also marries up with my own assessment, I don't really think that makes a whole lot of sense. And quite frankly, it's a bit of a bastardization of, uh, of, of the scientific rationale. Um, it's a little bit like saying, you know what, don't use a parachute because no one's ever done a uh, randomized control study on parachutes where they threw a whole bunch of people out of a plane with parachutes and a whole bunch of people out of the plane without a parachute and just saw how the two groups compared. Why? Well, I'm willing to suggest you'd find it very difficult to get people to participate in that study. What's the take home, uh, for, uh, take home message from this rant? Well, the take home message is that posture is important. Whether you're at the gym, whether you're sitting at the dinner at dining table, whether you are sitting at your workstation, whether you are washing the car, whether you're doing any number of the activities that require good ergonomics, which would be better to have appropriate posture. It will be a focus of um, videos in the future. It is a big focus of the website where we have a car posture uh, worksheet. We have a workstation posture worksheet. Jump onto the website, task.net.au, uh, task with a C, so Tango, Alpha, Sierra, Charlie, and have a look at the tab that says resources, and you will find these things. I encourage you to use them. Get a sit-stand desk, because remember, one of the more, most important things about postures is not to be in a static position for too long. Static posture is the new cancer. Don't want to over-dramatize over it, but it's just how it is. I'm going to take a break. Take a breather, I'm a little agitated, and I'll see you on the other side. Hi, we've been getting some fantastic feedback to our videos, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you. But also, I was going to help to ask you if you could like the post. Remember to subscribe, because that allows you uh, to be notified when we make additional posts. Remember, subscribing is free. But more importantly, if you could remember to comment in the post and engage with other uh, viewers, that's fantastic. Uh, it also, more importantly, allows me to tailor my content to suit you better and answer the questions you have. Oh, what a refreshing break. Thank you, I feel much better now. We'll move on to the second part of this video, which is just a brief opportunity to touch on the degeneration of the disc, specifically degenerative disc disease. There are three phases when we talk about degenerative disc disease. There's dysfunction, which is where things don't work particularly well. There's relative instability, okay? And then finally, there's stabilization. What those terms refer to is dysfunction, and you've seen this model in the practice on many occasions. Dysfunction talks about the phase where you get small tears and breakdown in the disc, and this results in a bit of a loss of disc height. So the height of the disc breaks down, and when that happens, it's a little bit like a car that's running on flat tires. It's not as stable as it really should be, and that creates the environment for small tears, for damage, often damage that's not repaired and not resolved. Um, 
and it has the net effect of uh, creating the next phase, which is relative instability, which is where the disc is not able to stabilize itself and stabilize the motion segment, and that accelerates all of these degenerative changes uh, and a whole lot of unhappy changes within the disc. In response to this, if this uh, process is left unchecked, the body will attempt to stabilize the segment. And it does so by calcifying various parts, uh, ligaments that run the length and breadth uh, of the spinal column, it will calcify them. Essentially, it's trying to fuse the segment, which sounds like a good idea to the body, but it's a pretty uncomfortable process. As we move from um, relative instability all the way through, we get these tears, we get this damage to the disc, it's an uncomfortable um, process. Some people experience more pain than others, that goes to the uh, variability in the innervation of the disc from person to person, and the uh, variability of the sinus vertebral nerve, it's my favorite nerve. But um, it all moves through to uh, this stabilization. And some, some even say, once you get to stabilization, You'll be sweet as a nut, won't be a problem because it will have fused, it's not moving anymore. The reality is just because it's fused doesn't mean it's not going to potentially be a source of pain. But the other thing is, yes, that segment may have fused and potentially not be a source of instability, which is going to cause uh, pain and discomfort. But the problem is all of the work it used to do, because it is now fused, now passes on to the next segment in the chain. And it starts going through these processes of dysfunction, relative instability, and then eventual fusion. Fortunately, we don't actually live long enough for this to happen across most of, uh, most of the segments of our lower back in most people. Some people, you think of them as overachievers, they can have three or four segments that are doing this, but that is rare. Uh, for most of us, it's the best we can do in our life to get to one or two. This is the process that's going on. It's real. The reason I raise it is because the traction that we use at the Ashco Spinal Center is specifically targeted to have a, have a regenerative and healing effect on the disc, aiming to reverse the impact of those changes, to stabilize the disc, to prevent the progression into relative instability. On top of that, we can unload uh, the disc, you know, the five pillars, we talk about uh, promoting healing, we talk about restoring normal movement, we talk about, hmm, we talk about ergonomics, uh, we talk about exercises, and we talk about lifestyle factors. All of these are really important in optimizing your disc health specifically, because disc degeneration is the single biggest issue in spinal degeneration. I'm gonna cut it short there. We'll have a whole bunch of additional videos. Trust me, I would love to talk for longer than you would like to listen about the human disc uh, and the spine in general and spinal health, but to make this a better experience for all of them, I will break it down into smaller bits. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much for your attention.